Welcome, Achievers, to a special, sort of, episode of these Achievers Game Pockets for the week of May 2nd, 2024. Now, every now and then I do something a little different with the show. Um, sometimes I just get a topic and I talk about it, and that's going to be this episode here uh, for you today. We just kind of sit down, we discuss something, uh, and we kind of hash it out. And today I want to talk about layoffs. You've seen the thumbnail, you know what we're talking about. And... Specifically, I want to talk about the layout of the industry and what maybe we can expect in the future, maybe in the uh, mid to long term, maybe something even further than that. I'm not really sure, but uh, I want to just sit down and talk about it. And this is of, I mean, there's multiple reasons I think we should be able to, uh, not be, sorry. Uh, I think there's multiple reasons we should be talking about something like this. One, it's something that is brought up on the show quite regularly, right? You you know, you're listening to the Easy Achievers Game podcast that goes live every single Friday. Uh, you'll be seeing multiple times I talk about XYZ Studio has closed for, you know, Y reason. Uh, generally, we can chalk it up to overestimations from the COVID uh, uptick. Um, if you are unaware, maybe you're newer to the industry. Of course, everyone kind of experienced a giant uptick in pretty much anything related to video gaming. The, you know, sales were up, monthly active users were up, um, and we can go on but to talk about layoffs in, in such a way we i think we must garner why some of these things are happening when is it happening why this year specifically um i want to bring up something really quick uh, everyone at home can actually look it up to kotaku actually did a very good article um and it is actually updated and it reads um uh, well, it's updated every now and then, so the days aren't correct right now. I'm sure they'll regularly update it. Uh, but it's titled 89 Days into 2024, and 8,800 plus video game layoffs have been announced. Of course, that is a lot. The biggest ones, of course, being the Microsoft layoffs that once they finalized the Activision Blizzard, they took the time to, of course, remove a lot of redundancies and probably some underperforming or what they seem uh, to be underperforming studios probably cut some... Uh, quote unquote fat now bef i'm already starting to do it so before we get deep into the show i hope none thing i say here comes across as callous or uh, unfeeling of course layoffs are incredibly sensitive topic these are each 8800 plus per uh, number although they are made into a number in that specific article, it is important because we need to know these things. But also, uh, each of those numbers is a different life that was infected either uh, positively or negatively from a layoff. Maybe they found a better job from the layoff or anything like that. But we're just going to, of course, say flat out layoffs are bad and they are horrible. And ideally, there would be none. But we are in a reality where they do happen. And they are, of course, happening with increased regularity. So I figured we'd sit down and discuss that today, really talk about layoffs how they're affecting the industry, what can we glean from it, if we can glean anything from it, and, uh, you know, just have a fun, chill conversation. Again, we usually have a uh, not-so-rapid-fire. We have what have you been playing. We have the start of the show, and then we have, of course, date update and what's queued up. We're just going to be talking about this today. If this is not something you return to, of course, we're going back to the regular schedule programming you expect next Friday. So be ready for that if that is if this is not something... You want to and also timestamps will be very limited if there are any at all uh, below because usually when I do one of these we just kind of sit that we sit back relax we really just kind of speak by mind and it doesn't really make sense to do timestamps for something like this especially when it's just me talking to you of course and as a reminder one more thing uh, like comment subscribe share you know it's youtube we've all used youtube we know what we're supposed to be doing i get it if you don't want to do that but if you would like to take a few seconds do that for me i'd appreciate it five star review on a podcast platform and then remember this is a round table uh, we're at a table you and i right now uh, let's picture one in our mind and this is a discussion that you and i are having maybe you and a friend talks amongst yourself but also make sure you leave a comment i like talking to the people out there Every comment gets answered for me. You can check past videos if you don't believe me. And I do take the time to talk to everyone. So thank you again for taking the time with me today. So let's talk about what spurred this. Let's talk over on Take Two. We're going to be reading from uh, we're going to be reading from Games Street Up is Take Two reportedly shuts down Roll Seven and Intercept Games Private Division 
also is suffering layoffs. We're going to be reading from James Batchelor. Again, always go over and click, but we're going to be reading a lot of this article here. More details have emerged about the ongoing layoffs at Take-Two Interactive, with reports suggesting that the pub uh, publisher has shut down two indie-sized studios. Bloomberg reported it has seen internal documentation that reveals UK developer Roll7, known for the Ali Ali series and Rollodrome, is planned for closure, with the publisher working on severance agreements for effective staff. The documents also detail plans to close Intercept Games, the Seattle-based studio behind Kebler Space Program 2. Yesterday, Games Industry Up is uh, reported on a warn notice filed in Washington State revealed that a Take-Two-owned Seattle office will close this June and affecting around 70 employees. Bloomberg noted there's approximately the same number of staff who work at Intercept Games. Both studios are part of Private Division. That's Take-Two's label for publishing indie games. Uh, the label uh, formed Intercept Games in 2020 after taking over development of Kerb uh, Kerbal Space Program 2 and acquired Roll7 in 2021 so this is actually uh, something that is very very new uh, we're talking only four years since they formed intercept and then since they acquired roll seven in 2021 and that is a sh these are always the saddest because they they don't even have time to really uh go anywhere right they formed um intercept games in 2020 and then the Kerbal space program acquiring these and then immediately Shutting them down is very sad. Uh, Rollodrome, I know, did not do well as far as I remember hearing. So a lot of things are probably going down over there. And it's very sad. But that is what really wanted me to uh, get into this. Now, you can, of course, read the rest of the, stu uh, the studio's announcements from that article. I'm going to continue a little bit at the bottom here. When asked for confirmation, take two issues, the same statement as yesterday. Included below in full, quote, on April 16, Take Two announced a cost reduction program to identify efficiencies across its business. We report on this, actually, and to enhance the company's marginal pro margin of profile while still investing for growth. As far as these efforts, the company is rational, uh, yeah, rationalizing its pipeline and eliminating several projects in development and streamlining in its organizational structure, which will eliminate headcount and reduce future hiring needs. The company is not providing additional details on this program. On April 18th, and it continues here, on April 18th, Private Division successfully launched Moon Studios' No Rest for the Wicked. The label continued to make updates to Corporal Space Program 2. Plans to release Weta Workshop Game Studios' Tales of the Shire, a Lord of the Rings game in the second half of 2024. End quote. And this is, of course, uh, along the announcement that last month, 5% of Take-Two will be laying off, being laid off. That's around 580 people. These, of course, is some of them. It's very sad, of course. A uh, heart goes out to everyone. I'm sure everyone will land on their feet. Very talented studios there, especially with Holly Ollie. But coming from that, right, if we're talking specifically about Take Two and we're bouncing off from this story, uh, it's it's almost strange to think about it, right? When Take Two, we're thinking that is one of the ones you don't expect these layoffs, right? We we are going to see a transformation. I think no one's really prepared for in GTA 6 launching very soon maybe next maybe next year maybe maybe the year after who knows somewhere around there i remember there were some documents uh, stating that there is a possibility uh they they foresee heavy revenue very very soon right and we all know what that means right there we're looking at billions of dollars possibly in a year maybe even you know so this is going to be transformative in the way people view games and i think this will actually really shake up the video games industry in a way that I don't think we can really foresee until it kind of happens. Uh, I think we'll be looked at even more seriously. We're li we're already seen kind of seriously through, uh, you see more TV shows being developed, more movies and et cetera, et cetera. But once that, once that happens, it, I think something will change. And when we're talking about take two and, and being so close to such a cash cow, a cash flow, a huge injection into the studios, you have to kind of scrub, scratch your head and be like, well, why, why are we laying off studio accounts? Is this just to buff up high execs numbers? Is this to utilize the money more efficiently elsewhere? It's very strange. I'm not going to pretend like Kerbal Space Crow and two is making all this money. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, you know, Roll7 is this pristine studio that demands to stay open, but it's strange to see that there wasn't an extra effort made to be like, hey, we don't really need to do this. Maybe we reprioritize or shift hiring in a different way versus just cutting off 
all of these jobs. Maybe we figure something else out. We are about to get a huge influx of cash. I'm not saying that GTA should be fueling this mass monster, but it it's it does not look great, especially given the context of the entirety of the situation, let alone just this one situation with these layoffs. So and it's it's very strange to see specifically Take Two doing this, and they're not done. Right, that's just the two studios. They still have a more uh, higher percent, and this is this is one of the worst ways to do it. Right, no one really knows who it's going to be. No one knows when it's happening. I'm sure they're going to, you know, do some layoffs when GTA Six launches or is getting ready to launch. You know, and they're going to cut down some more people there. Maybe, who knows? But strange, and and I think that puts us into a good spot to jump off into the games industry as a whole. Right, we're noticing continual layoffs in the new in this well, not new year we're already five months in we're almost halfway through the year but in this year we're noticing just this huge swath and i get that money is tight if you actually something a conversation like this actually almost demands a political and economical sense into the looks and of course money is getting tighter uh inflation is getting higher fed rates etc you know we can keep going deeper and deeper if we'd like and really analyzing this from a a money standpoint, and that's probably what we're looking at, right? They might be uh, not. We're not talking about Take Two anymore. We're talking about the game share whole. But multiple of these people might be looking uh, ahead and seeing not great sightings. At some point, uh, we have a lot of catching up to do in terms of how our economy doing it is specifically in the U.S. Maybe a lot of these companies are seeing that, right? The biggest ones are. Uh, very centric to America's when you actually look at where they're positioned. There are, of course, some Japan studios that did it, but of course, Microsoft being the kind of the, I want to say the biggest one, if we're not counting uh, the Embracer shenanigans and all that, what's going to happen there? Not even including them. We're going to see something uh, that's going to be a big deal. If, and to backtrack a bit, when we go back to COVID times, and of course, everyone saw the giant windfall game industry is something that we probably will never see again quite like that uh everyone was you know forced to stay in the house we all played kind of either together or etc and we're seeing a, that giant windfall and it's come crashing down now when we look at that and we also see there was some research done recently that um uh a lot a lot of the games being played right now are old games these games as service games and there's so many different data points that we can kind of combine to really be able to see what what might be an increasing problem to a lot of game studios right if we're seeing these games as a service rise and rise and rise of course there's a lot of failures but when we're seeing a uh gaming sphere that has not grown and is not growing let's not forget uh, sean layton had a very important quote the problem that the game industry can face if costs are growing there must be more sales to accommodate for but the actual gaming landscape the gaming um uh ecosystem is not growing it is pretty much the same 300 ish million people i believe uh, i think that's what sean Layden said and it's not necessarily growing if anything it might be decreasing and that's why, of course, we'll see. We'll maybe see a huge transformation in a couple of years with mobile, more systems making handheld, trying to uh, get people to play their systems also handheld through maybe some sort of remote play function. But that's for three to five years from now. Uh, speaking from right now, we're looking at this rapid change in how we're viewing things because these games are serious, right? Fortnite has cut a slice off, right? We think about that. Think about it that way, right? And maybe this Call of Duty fan who was buying one to three, uh, two other games a year, uh, maybe a, a game here and there, is now really only maybe playing Call of Duty Warzone since it's getting regular updates, and that's he's kind of fine playing that. Or maybe the same thing with Madden or NBA. Maybe that player isn't just buying that many games, and uh, now we notice maybe that sphere is even shrinking, right? If we look at monthly active users. It, in the various ecosystems, they're not necessarily growing. They're they're pretty much staying where they are. They find a game, they stick there. That might be the issue that a lot of these industry, uh, when they're doing data, you know, Microsoft, Sony, they have 
very, very deep. Yeah, they know what everyone's playing. Maybe they're seeing their sphere of potential buy shrinking such to the degree that they actually might have to sync up their um their belts a bit, lay off people now, guarantee money later in maybe a smaller release, maybe a less high budget game because. Let's not forget these games are ginormous in budget. Spider-Man 2, for instance, I want to say it was $325 million. God of War. These are all marquee, top-of-the-line games that we all point to to kind of show, hey, look look where gaming's going, where it's coming, and where it's gone. These are where we've been up, and that's $300 million. That's $325. Uh, we think of Red Dead. That's cra- Red Dead 2, that's crazy. Crazy amounts of money that we're pouring into these things to try and... Uh, have them explode in popularity and you pray to get that money back and although those are successful you're not getting the rips that they need we know sony is actually looking at to try and boost their sales pc i think is going to help them a lot with that xbox right now moving away from the entire reason that you would get into this industry make a system become a first party make all this rip off of third-party sales etc etc then make your own games make 100 percent off that game pass completely eradicates that on their own platform now they must go elsewhere to find more money they go to playstation they sell sea of thieves it blows up now they're seeing increased revenue and they go well we're doing this now right so we're already seeing these little things happening right these little kind of instances that have now exploded into something that is changing the uh, landscape of what we're seeing, right? Xbox, you know, I want to say 10 years ago, we wouldn't have thought about that, right? They made, they made the move to PC. At the at the time, it made sense, but if you look at it back now, they probably had to do that. Um, if they didn't, they probably would not have made another Xbox if they did not have a PC thing that, that at least fueled them like, hey, we can rip some revenue from the PC section. You know, we're a Windows company. Why are we even exclusive on here? We all know that the we brought it up on the show before. Sati Neville doesn't like exclusives. He's the CEO of Microsoft. He doesn't understand them. He wants to make the most money everywhere. He doesn't care if it's exclusive. He wants you to come to the Xbox for a service in Game Pass. So if we think about it from that point of view, Microsoft specifically, that, you know, that does make sense. But... Of course, they're in it for money. So money fueling all these things and their road that they followed is what inevitably landed them there. PlayStation, similar, but also pretty different way to view things, right? They find themselves in a situation where they're ballooning and they're having to diversify and find different ways of making money right let's go to pc their mobile initiative clearly failed i remember jim ryan having a famous quote saying by x date we'll have some number of mobile games there are zero last time i checked uh, or maybe two or something like that so that's completely failed their games as a service things clearly is faltering i will not say failed they've not really launched anything yet uh, so I won't say their initiative has failed, although it clearly has faltered with the cancellation of Last of Us um, uh, Online, I believe is what it was going to be called. And, uh, of course, we saw layoffs around all of this. And when PlayStation announced the uh, their kind of change in structure, Microsoft also doing that. Um, in hindsight, I, I they, of course, did a lot of redundancies with the merger, but I think if you actually look at that layoff as a whole, they did take the time to go to 343. They went to all these other places and started skimming people that they clearly wanted to probably get rid of. The The only thing that's a questionable is how anyone in the higher-ups still have jobs there, especially, like, it's not going to get into that. I complain about it enough. But that's all this, I think, is important to remember I apologize if I'm rambling a bit. I am off script. I wanted to really just kind of sit here and discuss with you guys. So I apologize if this mean looks seems like nonsense or uh, there's no clear through line. I just want to discuss this. Uh, so moving back into um, the layoffs and things, we're seeing the 2022 shakeup. And when I think of these problems and maybe potential solutions to this, right, we bring up COVID, the giant fall right if you invested any money into keeping or maybe expanding your team you probably did it unwisely let's not forget people are probably the most expensive thing in an entire project especially when you're getting to 10 
50, 60, 100 teams. I mean, we're thinking, what, if you're in L.A., which a lot of companies are, right? You're, what, we're probably with benefits and to really get talent, and we're just going to ignore how hard it is to get talent right now. Although layoffs might actually cure a lot of those issues we have, but there might not be jobs to cover them. That also gets complicated. But when we look at all this, we're, what? I mean, how much could each person cost them with benefits and pay and all these things? Hundred grand person or something like that? Maybe even more. And we're not probably even talking about rent at that point. Where where are you going to be? So it gets more and more expensive, especially the longer you take on things. And these games are ballooning to take. It used to be the golden rule: three years, right? Three years. And at some point along the way, that changed. Now we're looking at four, five, six. Six seems to be more common now uh, than four almost, right? It seems to be strange, especially when they're trying to make their own engines. They're trying not to use these more common engines uh, so they don't have a another rip. Let's not uh, forget when you're using Unreal Engine, when you're using these different engines, that um, are licensed out, you are giving them a rip of your sales. Uh, Unreal will help you a lot, but not as much as making your own engine or maybe just trying to to, uh, to get around making your own engine and just not having to pay anybody, right? We see that with um, uh, many a company. The Halo tried doing that with Slipstream and keeping their thing going. They're quitting that, and they're just going to go with that. That's a completely different issue, but with when we're seeing all these games and the way they're trying to cut costs, it's interesting. And maybe we're seeing a shift in the industry that we might not have ever seen before, how they're going to try and save money from, from this situation or that situation, trying to, uh, maybe they're going to try and go in the Julius, uh, sorry, Judas, um, route, of course, that is being made by Ken Levine and his team. What he did was cut a lot of his team. I want to say he laid off half, half of his staff or, or took a lot of people with him. And he's just been chilling, making a game for cheap, right? So you make a lot of money up front with his big success. And now he's just keeping uh, money cheap and uh, keeping very few people you make it longer but the money sticks around longer yes and maybe we'll see maybe a shift towards that we're seeing you know studios open rapidly now maybe that's going to be a mindset that many you look forward to right ken levine very smart man maybe he will kind of heart, like bring forth this change that we'll see that will maybe save many many studios a lot of money we can of course think of um the initiative uh over at um, oh my god. Haven. Uh, if I remember correctly, Haven is trying to semi-revolutionize how you make games, maybe utilizing the cloud more. If we remember, there were a lot, a lot of engineers hired when Haven was start was start up and running and they started their uh started getting closer and closer to PlayStation until they inevitably joined them. And when we look at that, many engineers were right, maybe that will help the engine problem that many studios are facing right now, uh, because, you know, when you think about it, studio, you know, you, you, you're a big, stu big name studio. You go to release a game, 30% is gone, right? Because you got to pay each platform. Maybe you have a different agreement or maybe you don't. So you see, you know, you pay 30% to each platform, right? Then you're dropped to 70%, right? So you have 70% of your money. Then you have to pay your engine, right? And then you got to pay the people. And then now you have your surplus that you can live on, right? So, and of course, it gets much more complicated than that. But that's just a way of thinking about it. Bungie, important uh, thing to bring up how they've completely floundered, had to lay off a bunch of their people because things aren't working out for them. I think that would be a different example, not necessarily of the hubris from, uh, that that gave a lot of people from COVID. But you know. If you mess up, that costs you a lot. Maybe maybe a lot of these layoffs are a combination of a lot of things, right? I'm usually of the mind that you can't really point to one thing being the solution for everything, but there's probably many reasons for any given event that actually happened. It's not usually one giant reason. It's this slow buildup to maybe um, a couple reasons, right? And that probably is another one too, right? You mess up once, that might be game over, especially in the kind of... A tiptoe landscape we look at that with callisto protocol right that game came out did 
combined costed way too much money and it's pretty much over for them right uh we we see the um i didn't glenn Schofield just leave callisto protocol creator let's see i think he just left didn't he? yeah yeah he left leaves the he leaves callisto protocol studio to pursue new opportunities so, I mean, he just left clearly after a fail. I'd be shocked if that studio stays open for much longer. We'll see, but not sure. But yeah, really going off all these layoffs, kind of closing up the the show for the week and kind of trying it off on a bow. I don't really think we're walking away with a solution to anything or really a answer to any specific problem, but just given the nature of what's going on, given the actual ecosystem that we're finding in, right, we're, we're the player base is getting more limited and selective in what they play because things of like Game Pass, things like these games as a service, funneling them away. We already have a player base on game, Xbox that don't want to buy games anymore because the Game Pass is the thing they have. They don't want to buy games because I got, game, you know, I'm paying for Game Pass. That's where I want my games, right? Then we see people who, you know, I play Apex. Maybe I'll stop to play, like, my Call of Duty game or my, you know, big hit indie that kind of came out of nowhere and surprised me, you know, for, like, just a random example. Maybe Hades 2 will be that game for that person. And then that's their game, you know, that, and that's finished. And now we're maybe down to 50 million people that you have to kind of talk into and hope that a fifth of them buy your game. And now you're a success or something. Uh we're looking at square getting more selective as well that i think that ju that just came out because um if you read the forest through the trees final fantasy 7 rebirth probably did not do very well at all did not do very well oh i see a lot of people saying well it's a sequel it wasn't meant to sell well, i don't know where this came from this unless i am very confused uh you're supposed to sell more with your sequel not less so not really sh maybe i'm confused here on what people mean by that when they say, well, it's a sequel. It's a, uh, when did that happen? No, it's sequels generally sell more because people are more excited about the last product and this will get them higher. Now, did they shoot themselves in the foot because it's not Final Fantasy VII Remake 2 or something? I don't know. Maybe uh, there's a mix of that. Maybe it just fell through. Maybe you just couldn't find the audience. Who knows why? Because the quality is there. The marketing seemed to be there because I remember seeing ads for them in places. So I'm not really sure why it failed. And maybe that's where we're going towards, right? We're not really sure why things didn't sell well. Maybe it's hard to garner that information. I'm not really sure why it didn't do well. Maybe they lost the zeitgeist to other games. Maybe Stellar Blade took a lot of their hype. Maybe something else took a lot of their hype. Square Enix famous for their very high expectations, but I don't think it I don't think it failed a very high expectation. I think it failed a meet expectations mark. And that's going to be very worrisome, especially with someone like Square who are not afraid to drop something and not afraid to completely pivot. They're not afraid to kind of uh, completely just like let's not forget. This is the people who completely sold off their Western studios. because They're just I mean, to me, they seem just tired of dealing with them. They were just tired of they just wanted to get rid of them and they wanted to move on and stick with what they were doing. And they got they got rid of them for an insanely cheap price. Still don't really understand uh, that at all. We of course, we don't know the full plan, the full details of the plan, but or the sale. Maybe there were extra strings or something, but I still am flabbergasted when I think about that. I think it was 300 million for a bunch of studios and their IPs. I I do not know, but miss uh, foggy waters ahead you know when that's when i try to think of like what what happens next year what happens two years what happens in three years i, I don't know do we see a drastic change do we see something incredibly different do we do we see another spike probably not right but it is always hard to fore uh, foretell the future, right? It's hard to sit down and be a oracle for something like this, it, especially when there's so many factors, right? And especially with something like GTA coming, maybe GTA kills a bunch of games too. Let's not forget that that can definitely happen. Call of Duty famous for that when it was in its heyday. 
Uh, you did not want to be around Call of Duty because you will not win. EA found that the hard way when they specifically made a release schedule to try and hurt Call of Duty. And all they did was kill a uh, incredibly successful franchise and wound another one. And I think that's it. I think that's what I wanted to talk about today. Again, more rambly than usual. Uh, I am a rambler, but hopefully we garnered something from this. Hopefully the discussion is in your mind. Hopefully this has provoked you in some way to uh, really have a different understanding, different thought process of, of maybe this. Maybe I jogged something that you wanted to discuss about this. I'm not really sure, but I thought this was uh, an interesting topic to kind of sit down and discuss. Let me know what you think about this. Do you like me kind of sitting down and just speaking off the cuff? Do you want me to kind of be a little more analytical and sit down and really write out a, a, a bullet point list and script and really get in the nitty gritty of things? Let me know. Comments below. Tweet at me at me a thousand. However you want. Uh, and I thank you for spending your day with me or your time. Not day. Sorry. Spending your 30 minutes with me. Spending that, you know, a little bit of time and sticking around to the very end. Remember, uh, I appreciate anyone who listens to the show for any reason, but especially appreciate it if you maybe take a little extra time, like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. And um, that's going to be me. I'm going to go back to Stella Blade. Uh, expect an impressions video right after this. Uh, that should be going live shortly after this video. So if you're early to this video, um, check, check the next day or the next few days for my Stella Blade impressions video. Thank you so much, and until next time, go Chief.